There's an artist that left the biggest record label in the world. Why did she do this? Why did she force her way out? Well, I'm going to go ahead and play this clip so she can speak for herself. I signed to the biggest record company in the world. It still is. It's Universal Republic. And I just got lost in the shuffle. You know, they had Post Malone, Drake, Taylor Swift, Nicki Minaj. And I wasn't on that level. So they were just like, okay, we're going to shelve you until something miraculous happens. But it was so incredibly difficult to not be able to release any music and still just be like spinning my wheel. So I ended up asking them to let me go and they graciously did because by that point I was about 2.5 million dollars in debt and they did not have to let me go they could have kept me there and held me there but luckily they did let me go and then I started building out an independent career and licensing my songs in different territories and really seeing more connection and success that way so if you are an artist, a new artist, I really strongly encourage you to build everything you can on your own until you just need them to like, you know, put you on SNL or something. Because if you expect a record company to take you from zero to 10 or even five to 10, um, you're, you're really putting all of your control into their hands. Also, I just want to stress that you don't need to be at 10. Like you can have a very fine career at a five or a four or a six. And Julius, she preaching, man. She, she's saying a lot of stuff and it's coming from real experience, like two, $2.5 million in debt experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's a lot of wisdom. <laughs> a lot of wisdom, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the biggest problems that I see artists do, though. Not, I'm not even saying her, but it just reminded me that artists get so caught up in going to majors and going to teams that have all these dope artists there. Mm -hmm. When you don't realize if you're not on those artists level, the incentive to work on you and for you is not necessarily there. Yeah, well, those are our roadblocks. You got to. Bow that room and yeah. artists. If y'all don't know artists, if y'all haven't looked in the mirror, artists are selfish. They're like, yo, what you doing doing all that work for him? Why is he on that playlist mm -hmm. and I'm not on that playlist? Mm -hmm. They start looking at other people on the label trying to figure out that y'all making moves, y'all making progress, but you still haven't responded to me or or my project or my single just didn't it didn't hit the way it needed to. Yeah. Like all this is happening. So if you're feeling that way and you might go through something like that. Imagine an artist that has 10 times more leverage doing that. And then there's multiple of those artists that are doing that. But, hey, I'm in this system and they got all these people on the team. So they should be able to get a feature for me with these different types of artists or they should be able to help me with all these moves. If the incentive isn't there, a lot of times you're better off going with a team where you are their primary priority. Yeah, that's where the indie labels and stuff start and, shining. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's where any labels start to shine because you being their priority is what's going to help you in your career. Yeah. And I know it looks tough. Oh, you got to build something up versus I could join something. They have all these different resources. But what's the, the outcome at the end of the day? Even if you if you hit and you see some progress, if you're not the main priority and they want you to be the biggest thing possible because it's also incentivized for them to make you the biggest thing possible, why wouldn't I just be happy with just taking you to level six? Because I already got some tens and the work I would have to do, taking my attention off the ball, it's easier to keep this 10 at 10 than it is to go take you from six to 10. Yeah, but I exactly. like you being at a six. Yeah. You know what I mean? Six makes me money. Yeah, six makes me money. Yeah. We're in the space. I'm good with that, but you aren't good with that because you want to be a 10. Yeah. So it's really about finding a team that has the abilities but are not in a place where they have that much going on for whatever reason. And that looks different. There could be, there's like these execs that leave a label and they're now they're just starting. So they've mm -hmm. done this before plenty of times and they have all kinds of relationships and they're in some kind of partnership mm -hmm. and they do this, but because of where they are, they're focusing on somebody new and you could be that first like project for them, mm -hmm. right? It's like early on when Jay-Z, who came president of Def Jam, the Rihanna yeah. was a really, really big deal for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not that um obviously Rihanna wasn't Rihanna and who she became anyway, she she didn't have that in her, but 
it was really priority in comparison to what that would look like after having a Rihanna and those things and Jay-Z not being a new person, right? Yeah. Again, him yeah. being new, I'm trying to prove myself. I'm starting up this new company looks way different. So if y'all can find teams and people like that in the industry, that's something to look out for. I'm not saying never do any of these companies that have somebody on their team because maybe they're just one person or two or maybe even two artists and then you can fit in some other way somehow right but especially if your demographics overlap right and it's called competition for resources yeah, pretty much, yeah. competition for resources yeah. there's all these different things where people like to look at people winning that's the biggest thing people everybody wants to be on a winning team but don't understand what being on a winning team looks like it means you're gonna be Third string. Third string, baby. Because they already got a packed roster. Yeah. You go to Golden State Warriors and you're going to have to give up something. All right. You you might not have the ball in your hand as much because they got Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson. They had KD for a period. Like, you know, you go to a team yeah. like that. I got the ball less in my hands. And I'm, I might win more. But the difference is. In the art side, that doesn't mean you win more. Yeah. On the sports side, that means, yeah, I got a ring and I probably did less work to get it. On the art side, that just means I didn't get a ring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the problem. You can't take that mentality everywhere per se. You want competent people. You want good people, people who did shit. But going to a packed roster is overrated. Yeah. And I, I think the other big thing she touched on, too, which was – I know it was a, a huge eye-opening experience for me when we learned it, was that these smaller artists that are signed to major labels have to do the same amount of work that artists who aren't signed to major yep. labels are, right? So I know I personally learned that lesson in like 2019. I think 2019 was when I first ever got um, a major label client and we had, a, we had a good amount that year, right? And I remember us working with this one like smaller, I don't want to say label, but one smaller major label act I just remember like being on the calls every week, like listening to their marketing manager and, you know, having the budget conversation. It's like, man, like you artists that signed to this major entity, you look no different than this 3 p.m. call I have with this artist from back fucking nowhere. With, yep. You know what I'm saying? X amount exactly. of dollars in his bank account. And so what that taught me was that for newer artists, well, well for established artists or artists that maybe have some momentum already, what the label does for you and, and what that building looks like for you is much different than the artist that has is new that just signed to that label. Mm. When you are new and you just signed to a label, you the only difference between you and a non-signed small act is that if something magical were to happen for you, there's a building of people that can help you take advantage of it versus the small artist, let's say, let's say both artists got a viral moment. Artists at the major label, label gonna ideally kick into motion, start putting things together, right? right. Artists without a label, he or she has to start figuring shit out, right? Well, what do I do? What do I do next? But until that happens, everything else about the process is exactly the same. That, look, man, if I'm a label, like if my label, my record label can talk. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the record label would say, we don't make magic. We channel it. Yeah, that's fair. You make the magic. Yeah. We just yeah. help that magic go into places, channel it into new places because one, you're the artist, you're the product, right? Mm -hmm. And two, no one ever believes me when I say this because I always see comments. Labels cannot create momentum. Yeah. We cannot create momentum. This is me still speaking as a label, right? We can't create the magic. However, we know what to do with the magic. Yeah. All right? We know how to make that shit go to another level. Another level, keywords. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply, it's completely free, but the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. 
back to the video. And the moment artists get that, and it starts to make sense, especially when you look at things today. There was a time, I think some of that's the, the dissonance, where a label did control so much part of the process and they even were more a part of making the magic, right? Or at least creating the infrastructure for that magic to be made. But now we're in today. And that that problem is, like you people, we say that, and I think every time we say that, people hear like, oh, labels don't do nothing or labels don't do nothing for you in a completely bad way. But when you look at some of these agreements, it just makes sense as well. Yeah. Right. Like that's your partner. A problem only comes when you expect me to do that and I don't do it. Yeah. But my assumption is you understand what this actually is. That's that's the problem. It seems like with a lot of these labels, because they're like, well, this is what we do. Yeah. Right. And this yeah. is what we always do across all these situations. I didn't tell you I was going to do that. I think that gap, though, is the reality is, no, that is what labels do. That's how they're supposed to function in today's age. However, there are people that are selling the dream so hard, they don't make it clear that that's not what they do. That's a part of it. Yeah, I think some of it, too, is just like like uh, a, a adaption, right? Like if I'm a label. OK. And I don't know, let's think of the artists of yesteryear, right? 1950s, some some smooth singing young buck that I found on the, the streets of Mississippi or some shit. Right. This motherfucker probably don't know nothing about music, more than likely not had any serious form of training. So I think at that time development was priority because like we had to walk this person through the route or they just wouldn't be able to do it. You fast forward to to, to, to today, not only are there, is there information and resources on the internet that artists can take advantage of, there are also different entities in between ground zero and major label that will also help you figure all this stuff out. So I'm looking at like, if I'm a label and I know that it's possible that by the time someone gets to me to where it makes sense, I don't even have to do anything. And I know that because I've seen it. I've signed artists that already came in with a content team and had a booking agent and had toured, you know what I'm saying, yep. 20 different cities. Um, you know what I'm saying? I already had artists come in that already had a million subscribers on, uh, followers on TikTok, half a million subscribers with generating 50K a month. If I now I'm a label saying like, oh shit, we don't even have to develop people one-on-one -on -one anymore because if we just, cast the net wide enough we'll collect all the people that figured it out before they got to us and now we can just focus on like she even said it putting you in places you can't get to i can get you on jimmy Kimmel. i can get you on this mm -hmm. this thing this thing that like you need crazy resources to get access to right i would have did the exact same thing you know what i'm saying and i, I know like labels still sign artists um they aren't popping like they still sign artists who, who are at zero like i said we've yeah. worked with some of them but i think that is Kind of like you said, one to just still kind of sell the dream. Like we still do that, right? Like, hey, we're going to pick you up obscure mm -hmm. artists and help you go from, you know what I'm saying, zero to 10. And then, you know, most labels even still are worked on by people who are passionate about music. But people who are passionate about music are going to find people they like and believe in for whatever reason and finesse them into the system, right? This, this leads to the other conversation, the Ray conversation. Oh, right? uh, yeah, yeah. So for those of y'all who don't know, she's an artist in the UK. Yeah. And my first... My first encounter with her was back in, I don't know, like 2017, because I would use all these song snippets as a part of my promo. And she was one of the artists I found. I was like heavy A&R back then because a lot of people that I share early on became big, man. So they got <laughs> they got the, the approval from from Adventure ATL and Sean early on, man. Um, now, with that being said, though, like I didn't hear from her after that. I was like, oh, yeah, she going to be it. I saw it and I didn't hear from her. And then as of recent, we were just in our meeting and this information comes out about like her label kind of holding her back. Mm -hmm. And you said you had been seeing some of that conversation too, right? Yeah, like over the last so, like three, four days. I'm gonna let you like go deeper into it because I didn't realize any of it. Y'all were telling me about how well, no, no, was holding her back. No, I was saying I had never heard of her as much as I heard of her until the last. Uh, okay. I thought she okay. was like, I thought she was a completely new act Okay. I saw a little bit of that narrative, but I thought she was completely new. And then, you know, like Sam dropped in our group chat and I went and looked up and I was like, oh, she got like 20 million monthly listeners. Who oh, I didn't even see that one when yeah. he dropped that. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. here's basically the the breakdown. Her label wouldn't let her drop music. Yeah, pretty much. Period, right? She was signed um, to Polydor back in 2021. No, 
she took on her record label Polydor back in 2021 to basically say, hey, y'all got to let me out of this thing. And she won. She had more than 17 million monthly listeners on Spotify. Now she's at like 30 something monthly yeah, like 20 something, 30, yeah, somewhere in there. She's popping, right? And she even has top 20 hits to her name. Like she got seven of them with like Beyonce, John Legend in terms of like songwriting skills. Okay. So, so okay. yeah, so she got some skills out there. And in the end of it though, she took to Twitter and used Twitter as leverage to say, hey, I need to get out of this agreement. And that's what multiple artists have done. But as you said, some artists are doing that and not coming out. Not coming out. They're not coming out of that situation, <laughs> right? Which is a whole other conversation. But she went out on Twitter to vent about being trapped in this deal with songs not being able to be released or simply being passed on to other artists because her pen game was so strong. So they were taking her music, shit that she wrote for herself and passing it on. I don't know how that happens. That's one thing that I personally haven't known of an artist going through where they're writing stuff and your record label has the right to say, no, we're going to give it to somebody else. I personally, you know, I'm, I'm hearing a new different finesse and scenario every day of music. It's, it's, it's crazy, yeah. but that's, that, that sucks. <laughs> I, I can imagine it's like that. You wrote this shit for yourself. And then they have the right to say who it goes to or not. So, they just they, hit you like, thanks for that Beyonce hit. You're like, what? Right, exactly. Because <laughs> they'll pass it on, but then tell her it's not good enough to be on her album. Yeah. Right? So, but we're going to still cap in another way. Yeah. So, in mid-July, she got released from her, her, her contract. And there's been so many artists that have been sidelined for periods of time, which we can get into for another conversation. But what happened with her, which is what made me think about her when you said the statement of the industry still has people at these companies who are all for the art so you might get this artist signed early mm -hmm. her situation was the person that signed her or was her primary advocate end up moving on from the company oh that happens so yeah, much yeah and she's locked down yeah in this scenario and your main hero your main um you know supporter is no longer there to support you and it happens so much, right? The company gets reshuffled, reorged, or somebody gets another opportunity. Mm. And then next thing you know, these other people don't even believe in you. They don't see the vision like you. Yeah, they and, didn't believe in you like Steve believed in you. Right, exactly. <laughs> and it's one thing to be a Two-Face company and we just pushing this line of Two-Face. So it's like, oh, the new person that comes in, they know that they're pushing this line of Two-Face. But this yeah. art is more particular. Yeah. Like you even have people at more traditional companies like that say, ah, well, I don't get credit for pushing this Two-Face. I want to come up with a whole nother one just so I can get credit. So you already have that type of ego that might come into it. But then yeah. literally we're talking about art. So it's specific. Even if that person was a nice person and was trying to like help deliver on some of the things the label had for you, they might not see the vision or understand the vision. And that's the thing that sucks about being at these companies when people move on and that's something that can happen at you name it any label any of these any of these, these, these organizations yeah. and that's when it comes down to the reality of it these companies the industry as a whole is made of people it's all people right so we'll say labels this label that the music industry this music industry that but it's people so she had a person that would have done right by her. Apparently, mm -hmm. I've seen this at many labels. I remember when uh, I think I, I think L.A. Reid left some, one which whichever label he left, and a lot of artists on the label were like, "Oh shit, man, yeah, gotta go." Yeah, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta figure out how to get out of here since he's leaving. Yeah, right. Right. So you have that advocate, you have that person on your team, and a lot of the times it's really about finding the people. And connecting with those people, getting deals and relationships with those people, not necessarily pursuing a label in itself. All right. Because it might look like, oh, they're in a good position to handle every single part of my process because of their resources. But do you connect with those people? Do those people see your vision? Are they incentivized? Because, again, you are still competing with other artists on the label and none of that leads back to the exact same business. Not your business. Right. Yeah. That artist doesn't increase your business. There's a lot of different factors to consider. But yeah, I, I, I find it so interesting when you hear about those, especially because it really sucks when you, it's like you did actually make the right decision. Yeah. The person just left though. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just learned this last year, actually, that you can, um, 
You can negotiate in your contracts with certain entities that like if this person that brought you in leaves, then you can go or they can restructure your contract. I don't remember the exact name of you know the, the clause or the thing that lets you do that. Mm. I'm not a lawyer, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I I learned this a couple months ago. Um, because like that happens, but we're going through that right now with a, with TikTok, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? So we know oh the, my God, we know right. the pain, bro. Right, like bro. you know, built up all this trust, this relationship, finally got a good flow going then. If they email such and such has been let go, hey, some new person taking up for your account. <laughs> we've been through that fifty times with TikTok, like not literally, no, I, not literally fifty, but we've been through it probably five times five in, last, five to in the seven. last like year and a half. Yes, yeah, like changing new people, <laughs> changing new people. Every time you get cool with one person, and have a little flow going, literally it's somebody else, and it takes you three months to even have that first meeting with that new person, and then they're all going to be gone two and a half months from then, one hundred percent, and. <laughs> There's the other company, not gonna put the company name out there, but you know, we got our main advocate. Okay. And they're like, hey, yeah. hey, connect with somebody else before you leave the building. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So uh, Which they are about to do, so shout out to them. They yeah. shout out to them. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. <laughs> right. But that that's literally a part of it. So the that's why you see some people move and shake so much in music though. Cause like Hey, bro, it's all a moving target. Let me just try to know everybody. Yeah, bro. You really <laughs> never know, bro. Like, it's nothing. You check in. Hey, bro, once again, congrats. Oh, I mean, I left that place like six months ago. What? 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 But, hey. yeah, music jobs have a crazy turnover rate. That's a conversation for another day. But the turnover rate in any music position is wild, bro. A lot of it. It's, it's <laughs> like sales. Yeah. That's the only one of the main places where I also see that type of, like, turnover. And it's not all looked at as negative. Yeah. You just see people going from company to company to company, especially like within tech. Like, oh yeah, I was an SDR over here. I was an SDR over here and just trying to find find a way. But yeah, now music, look, again, always remember, it's the people. So all the people can't be bad. But you just got to find those people instead of just looking for, hey, I want to be on this label. Who are the people who are over there? Right. Or I want to be on this management team or I want to be a part of this artist collective, whatever it is. You can't just look at how the situation is going good. You got to look at how can it go for you. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. Yeah, period. Facts. Period. And look, can't just be from your perspective because, you know, you're having them rosy eyes like, oh, man, yeah, this just happened and that just happened and that. And they got this so they could do that for me. But did they say they were going to do that for you? Do they see that happening in that way? Yeah, is that shit in your contract? <laughs> is that in your Oh, yes. I'm glad you said that because I thought about this when you talked about negotiating the person in the building being there or not yeah every single thing is negotiable in these contracts yeah, facts. like it gets very <laughs> very specific and what you negotiate just becomes better based on what you know yeah right because that might not matter for some artists for whatever reason but people who get it and have been through that they're gonna like oh i'm gonna ne negotiate that next time but there's some artists who never end up hitting that particular issue in their career yeah right but so it's not always about trying to get over on somebody or or not. It's literally just having the experience and being able to play chess to know that certain possibilities might happen. And how do you guard yourself contractually if this thing happens? Because they might not know they're going through a reorg. The people you're talking to they might not know like, oh, shoot, bro. We, you know, we're damn near just in the uh, imprint. We don't really have control control. Mm -hmm. And now they said they don't like the way we performing. So and it's not necessarily on this department. It's the other side. So yeah. they just said they're going to put a new CEO in place. And that dude's going to get rid of all the people he don't know. And he going to. You know, yeah. bring over all his homies. Or the buyouts? The, the buyouts. The buyouts. The buyouts. There's, there's so many <laughs> factors where it's not straightforward. And it's just on you to observe, talk to people who know, to then begin to think about some of these things that will protect you even when you aren't necessarily being done wrong. You just find yourself in a a, a uh, constantly changing environment. Yeah, That's man. the best way to say <laughs> A revolving door. <laughs> a revolving door for sure. <laughs> For sure. Now, with that being said, 